Welcome to You've Got a Point, a podcast for the School of Arts and Creative Industries. I'm really excited about this podcast because there are going to be all sorts of things involved in it. You're going to get an opportunity to hear some of our academics talking. You're going to get an opportunity to hear from students past and present, people from within industry who engage with us, who come and do guest talks, who have maybe recruited some of our students, and also um, talking about all the different things that we get up to within the School of Arts and Creative Industries. Hello and welcome to our podcast series, You've Got a Point. My name's Angela Lawrence and I'm an Associate Dean in the School of Arts and Creative Industries at Teesside University and I'm here with Sarah Perks. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you Ange and thank you for letting me be the first guest on the podcast. So I'm Professor Sarah Perks, I'm a curator and an academic and head of department and I also lead the research centre. Wow, busy, busy. So tell me a little bit about the school or tell the listeners a little bit about the school and what subjects we actually teach and deliver and give students an experience of in our school. Absolutely. So the School of Arts and Creative Industries is a really exciting school because it covers all of my favourite subjects, um, which include anything to do with art and design. So it may be that you want to do the kind of fine art or mm -hmm. illustration or onto more like applied areas, maybe like comics and graphic novels. There's also design, so whether that's fashion design, graphic design, um, and we're also covering all the kind of, you know, media side of things. So film and TV production being, um, you know, a real highlight for me in a really exciting industry that I've had the privilege to work in as well. Um, and journalism, maybe you want to be a journalist and make things like this podcast um, for a living. Um, and, you know, that's just starting off the top of my head, the kind of, you know, basic subjects that we do. We get into more specialist things at master's level, like curating, which I can come on and talk a little bit more about. Um, and also, you know, MA design, if you want that really kind of round experience following your undergraduate. Um, so, yeah, there's a real, um, you know, sense that there's probably something for you in mm. this school, however kind of creative or however you want something that's more like industry focused and applied. So it's not always the theory, it's really good mix of practical, theoretical. Um, there's a real way in to get your teeth into a lot of different subjects in this school. And of course, over the next few podcasts, you'll meet some of the people who can guide you through that as well. Absolutely, yeah, no, we've got some great podcasts coming up. Um, if you were thinking about coming to Teesside University and you had your eye on some courses within the School of Arts and Creative Industries, what do you think is special about this school? What is the real, the real nice things that will make it a great experience for students coming here? Absolutely. So there's a couple of things that spring to mind as real drivers. So the facilities. So I would want to come and I want to study in a place that's a really nice setup with all of the different bits of machinery and you know for whatever kind of subject I might be doing so I'm going to need a really good setup for example for fashion design mm. a really great studio with all the latest technology of how I make clothes how I maybe communicate about those clothes and um, potentially how I do that in the digital sphere as well yeah and good point. same with say something like journalism I want like a newsroom setup I want things to feel like active and to replicate industry, basically, I want to feel like I've not come to school. I want to feel like I've come to work. And that's the, you know, level that I expect. So the facilities, and that's the same whether we're doing, talking about fine art, whether we're talking about graphic design, um, film and TV, I need all the cameras, you know, up to date, photography as well. Like we bought some great new equipment for photography and just set up an amazing new darkroom as well. So that's something that I would definitely want to see if I came here. Also have some new equipment and facilities in music. So in our music production course, um, which is which is an amazing experience. We've got a new soundstage and I've been, you know, in the studio messing with the things that I don't really know how to work, but they look fantastic and you can quickly get some amazing sound and recordings and design features with those. Another thing that I want is not just things and equipment. I want people to yeah. show me. I want the people to help me understand, to support, and to you know give me that space to do as well as I can at my chosen subjects as well. 
Um, so, you know, I mean, I would say this, but my colleagues are amazing. They're really dedicated. They put the effort in. They know their stuff. Um, they're just a delight to be around. And that's sort of my, like, second criteria in a way of what, you know, what I think makes the school really amazing. The next thing that I want is something around like connections. Like mm. I want a route to industry, to, mm. pe to people outside of the university. And I want everything to feel grounded in reality. So I wanna, um, you know, understand the industry that I'm going in, but also just be a part of the world in a sense. So I wanna be connected yeah. um, to things maybe around like sustainability, about improving, you know, our environment, about fighting climate change, about, opportunities around inclusivity and supporting people from all different um, you know walks of life and backgrounds so it is you know the word I can think of is like connected I want to go somewhere yeah. where I feel a part of the wider world as well and just thinking about that connected thing and thinking about the northeast um, there's loads of stuff going on at the moment isn't there in the northeast there's loads of opportunities in broadcasting for example can you tell us a bit about what's happening in the northeast Yes, yeah. Um, the Tees Valley specifically, but also the Northeast a bit wider, um, is just seen a real investment. And there's been, you know, a move, things like um, Channel 4 to Leeds, but also the BBC are really behind developing much more provision in the Northeast. There's been a lot of independent studios that have set up connected to BBC or ITV. Um, there's a, you know, a real investment in the screen industry, shall we say, yeah. around the Northeast and the Tees Valley. Um, but also the, you know, the Tees Valley has so much to offer. I moved here a couple of years ago from Manchester. I've never regretted it. I found it one of the, you know, best, best places I'd never really been to <laughs> before. Um, and, you know, I love it. I wouldn't stop it for anything. I spent time in, you know, the world's biggest cities, Berlin, New York, Hong Kong. Um, there's something about the Tees Valley that is really exciting and special. It's the proximity to the coast. It's the, you know, industrial heartland that famously um, influenced Blade Runner, an old film from the 80s, if anyone's seen it. Um, it's the Moors is nearby, the countryside. There's a real vitality to Middlesbrough. There's a, you know, a little art scene here. There's things happening. It's not too big that you get lost and it's expensive. It's not too small that it feels kind of provincial in any way. So Tees Valley, you know, I'm putting my money on it as a real, like, you know, place to be in the future. Yeah, I'm with you on that one because I commute up here from south of Manchester every week to work up here. And I just love it. I love it in the summertime, going out in the evening after work. And you're never more than 15 minutes away from a beach or you can go and walk in the hills. Or And actually, that's a really interesting point with regards to opportunities for students. Um, some of the things that our students have done with... Uh, networking with those industries and networking with some of those outdoor places. Um, I don't know if you can recall anything that we've been involved in in terms of people coming in and creating opportunities for students recently. Yeah, we were involved in um, a television programme and this is a really interesting example actually because it was um, a sort of like travel programme. So there was a caravan that needed to be um, done up should we say or made into an effective like set for the program so our interior design students worked on that and then film and tv students could also help um, and be a little bit part of the production so it's those kind of things we really as a school look for example so if somebody gets in touch we'll you know follow it up or grab holds we have research projects that try to connect industry and um, you know our live courses and obviously all our team is involved in the world and tries to share and bring about these experiences together so whenever there's something happening because it's small enough to know that as well we can really tap into what's going on nearby bring it in as an experience for the course we've also done you know a lot of trips recently we've worked with English Heritage taken everyone to the North Yorkshire Moors there's yeah, there's so much uh, possibility because the setup is kind of close. Uh, you know, it's we're able to do all these different things. There's something of the, you know, a kind of Detroit meets Miami mm, and a real, yeah. a real kind of vibe that something is growing and happening here as well. There is investment. There are jobs. There are yeah, definitely um, things going on, and the combined authority is behind investment and things happening. So there is that sense of excitement and opportunity. 
And that just reminds me of something else which is linked to the fact that we're an Adobe Creative Campus and a student winning a, an international award and students have won lots of awards, haven't they? So how does that all happen and what, what, what have we won recently, do you know? <laughs> do you know, we, I feel like there's a, every week a really great story about someone, you know, winning an award. Um, one of our designers, Zara, won an amazing one recently in London. Um, you know, it's something, there's Creative Conscience Awards, yes. Conscious Awards as well, um, which is all about where people have made or designed work um, for a better world and for environmental issues. So yeah. we've been very successful at those awards as well recently. Um, and yeah, I think it just shows part of that connectedness that I explained before. It shows that we're in things, that yeah. we submit to whether it's the Royal Television Society Awards or... Um, various design challenges that happen that we put um, students into. It shows that it is possible. And the great thing about a lot of these competitions is they're not focused on London. It's, mm. You don't need to be there to win these things. And actually, you can you know, garner more attention, if you like, sometimes if you are outside of the capital um, cities. So, you know, I think following the blog, for example, um, that we have set up as a school is a really great way of seeing some of those competition winners, hearing their stories and, you know, following it live. I have to follow the blog to keep up with all the exciting things that are happening. Yeah, no, that's a great point, actually. There, there's always something and there's something new coming up. I'm, I'm writing something at the moment for the blog. So it's always live and current and students contribute to it and staff contribute to it. And yeah, everybody contributes to it now. I introduce you as a professor and not everybody will understand what a professor's role is within a university and certainly within our school you're a really key part of, of the creative side of our school so I wonder if you could just give a little bit of detail about what a professor contributes to the school. Yeah it's a really good question and also I do get asked a lot like what is a professor mm. um, and it's not also the same thing as being a doctor so a mm. doctor is when you've got a PhD which is a doctorate which is a really big qualification that you can do later um, after you've done an undergraduate and a postgraduate if you so wish um, but professor is a job role mm -hmm. and it's the highest um, on the academic kind of ladder so you'll be taught by a lecturer a senior lecturer an associate professor or a professor so it's just that seniority in a way and you proved that you've got a great track record at the type of research that you do which could be books but it also could be quite practical mm -hmm. um, so mine's been a combination of both working as a curator and um, so that's about putting on exhibitions doing projects there are a few books in there I've gotten to work with amazing artists and filmmakers all over the world um, so it's you know, it's something about that. I think it's good to demystify a little bit as well. Like, it's, definitely. You know, yeah. It's it sounds a bit heavy, professor, um, in a way. But actually, what we can do is enhance some of these connections and bring research into the teaching. And this is about like trying to make things real and not trying to make them more difficult in any mm. sense of the word. Um, because also, when you know you're doing a degree, for example, you want to like confidence that what you're doing is up to date. You don't want to be taught something from 10 years ago. Like, and what we can do is help bring everything up to date, bring into this, um, bring in the knowledge, bring in the people that we've met and some of the organizations that we've worked with. For example, I work every year with the um, BFI London Film Festival and also Alchemy Film and Media Festival. So I can bring some of that like festivity, if you like, um, into the school and also take uh, hopefully some students there as well. Yeah. Um, so there's a, you know, a lot I think that professors can offer and it's really about having an environment that can allow all of these things to happen so whether it's students staff like everybody needs to be you know together and working and finding ways to share and ways to inspire and enthuse um, and for me that's what really makes a place it's that combination of having yeah some nice facilities and some you know that that's a really good thing but it's where can we come together like yeah. where can we be here together and use things like MEMA as well that we have. I was just so, going to ask you about MEMA. I know leading on to MEMA so MEMA stands for Middlesbrough Institute of Modern Art and it's an art gallery and a museum which is just um, on the campus and it's internationally famous so it's really well known because it's had some amazing exhibitions over the years it's also got a fantastic collection which is very accessible and has lots of work within it um, and it's also well known for just connecting to communities and 
being a part of the like fabric of Middlesbrough and around. Um, so it's a really such a pleasure and privilege in a way to have this really you know established and really well known and respected gallery and museum as part of not just the campus but as part of the learning experience and it also is a focus for social activity so we have a MIMA um, art social every month where we all get together we hang out in MIMA we can share stuff we can you know have a drink and a nibble look at the latest exhibition and we also bring in local creatives to kind of um, showcase their work as well as obviously students sharing what they've been up to and some of our new curating students so that they'll be doing a master's in curating are also involved in setting that up and running it and helping to organize it so that's really exciting too so that sounds great how, how do students benefit from uh, what, what do students do how do they get involved with MIMA yeah so there'll be a number of ways so one would be to visit in terms of having somewhere mm -hmm. um, where they can see really exciting like art culture creativity to get inspiration so being able to visit and participate in events and also have it as a sort of social space um, and then it connects to various courses in a more kind of direct and hands-on way so whether that's fine art like they will do some lectures and sessions and workshops within MIMA that also would be applicable to well any subject to be honest they all kind of take it in turn <laughs> to yeah. use MIMA and be there so it's this great resource in terms of a different type of space it has this collection as well which yeah. has a great history so it's really good for thinking about ways to look at research for ways to connect work to history to yeah. people you know some of these some of these works are famous artworks some of them have been made more locally and produced so it's yeah. a really exciting um, way of looking at what's happened in the area over the years uh, in terms of following the collection um, and yeah it's just a, a way of making everything feel special our school Middlesbrough you know there's a real civic pride here and a real you know MIMA sort of is one of, of, you know, there's others as well that make Middlesbrough a really exciting place and the Tees Valley and Stockton and the sort of local area and um, there's lots to offer. It just adds to that little, you know, like level of creativity, experience, influence. It's not like coming somewhere where you get there and there's nothing to be found. Here we've got some real treasures for sure. So creative courses in general, um, very often, students may come to us and they followed a traditional route of subjects that they've been sort of directed towards, let's say, maybe by parents, maybe by teachers, but actually burning in the background is this fantastic ability to draw beautifully or paint beautifully or design comics or whatever it may be that they may not have a qualification in. So how, how does that work and what opportunities are that for not just for students who maybe come to us at 17, 18, but also maybe mature students who might be working, have families, but also have been doing art for years and haven't got the qualifications. How does that all work? Yeah. First thing is follow what you love, follow what inspires you. Do not what you think will, you know, make the most money in the future, but what do you love doing? Because it's a super cliche, I know, but if you do something that you love, it'll never feel like work. And yeah. that was a terrible cliche. But there's something about it that's true. And that's what I always did, like follow what I feel passionate about, what's gonna like excite me every day. Um, and then come and speak to us. So come to the open day, get in touch. Mm. And there's always a way through, I promise. There's always a route to study what you wanna do, to get where you wanna be, you know, whether that is um, you know, very specific, uh, you're like, I want to be a key grip, for example, <laughs> in the uh, film and TV industry here. Or whether you're just like, I don't know, I kind of like interior design, I think I want to do something around that. Or, you know, I've, you know, I've heard them doing the football match on the radio, could I be a sports journalist? Yeah. Um, you know, I kind of want to do music. Perhaps I don't want to be the, you know, leader of the band. Not in my case, I wanted to be the leader of the band. <laughs> but in other people's case, I want to be like, you know, the tech for the gig, like yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Um, 
So whatever it is, there's a way through. So it may be that you need to do a foundation mm -hmm. and that could be a really good thing to get you into the mindset of studying, to mm -hmm. get into the, you know, the language, uh, you know, it's half the battle in a way, like um, just getting used to the phrasing of academia and mm. it's some of it's like strange little things that like you've got to do it this way and that way. So that's a way to do that and to start to learn about your subjects um, before entering the degree proper. Um, there's also, if you're a you know, mature student, you've had a career break for whatever reason, or you want to combine it with work, there are ways of doing it. The, you know, a timetable doesn't mean that you're necessarily here nine to five, Monday to Friday, or more than that. Um, there are specific days that you do lectures, and the rest of the time can be quite flexible around your commitments, around your life. So it's possible to study full-time or part-time pretty much anything, I would say. There's a way to do it. Um, it might also be that you're on a, you know, and, and I have students like this, just a fast track to, you know, want to be a doctor or professor, that kind of thing. The thing that I want to stress is that it's never unobtainable. Mm. You know, it might take time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> You've yeah. got to put a bit of work in, but it's totally possible. Um, so that first step is just come to talk to us. And, you know, we're here to help you find that route to what you want to study, to what you want to do, to just what excites you about the world. And, and even if you're not really sure what that's gonna look like later, it doesn't matter. Like, it will change anyway. Like, just follow the journey, get into something, and let's see what we can all make together. And we love a portfolio, don't we? So we love to see the pictures you've drawn, the music you've created, the film that you've shot. So, so tell us a bit about the importance of the portfolio for the creative subjects. Absolutely. Um, love to see a portfolio as an indication of your ideas and what you can do. So don't worry about it being like super professional or in any kind of format. Like just get stuff down on paper, draw things, um, sing into your phone, make a film on your phone. Show us the you know potential as opposed mm. to a polished piece of work because that's why you would come here in a sense to take advantage of the facilities um, and you know i'm such a fan of just get the pen and paper out um, mm. as a curator i should be using sketchup pro um, and other like cad applications which you would learn in for example interior design but i love nothing more than just get a big piece of paper and i draw it not even very technically here's where i want everything and then i'll share it with the artist so you know, there's lots of different ways of doing things. It's really about how can you demonstrate that you've got the enthusiasm for it? Um, you know, if you came and you're like, I've already done it all and I've got my own, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> here yeah. it all is, then, you know, like that's good in some ways, but actually don't worry about that. Just get something together that you think is a portfolio and come and share it with us. It's actually the sharing moment that's almost more important than the actual portfolio. So you've told us about you as a professor and what a professor contributes to the school, but I know that our staff have got loads of industry experience and how's that linking, how's that relevant and important to people thinking of coming to join the school? So our staff are really exciting because they also work in the creative industries. They're there in the world um, making things, showcasing things, being a part of stuff. Um, whether that's a wallpaper designer, whether that's a, a comic book artist. Mm. Um, we, we have staff involved in loads of different things. So, and some, you know, running their own businesses in terms of the creative industries, some who just keeping at that cutting edge of practice and still winning awards, exhibiting, and um, just generally uh, keeping in there with all different types of practice. Yeah, so, it seems like every week, someone or other has got an exhibition going on somewhere or an event going on or something that they're doing which really demonstrates their connectivity with the the indus, ind industry that they're a specialist in doesn't it exactly exactly so i think it's it's just for me it's important that staff again aren't you know they are teaching but they're also learning as well yeah. at the same time and i think that that makes a much more rounded experience yeah, and it helps to bring, as you said about the research side of things and the professors, it helps to bring what's happening at the moment into the teaching and, and the challenges that you might find, the obstacles that you find in your way and how you get around them. Um, so very much those, those kind of life experiences as well as the knowledge about the subject area. Exactly, absolutely. And, you know, if I'm uh, teaching, for example, curating, mm -hmm. it just 
helps me think about it. And, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'll, you know, test test what I'm thinking with the students or, you know, ask opinions. And yeah. I think that, that is so important to have that two-way dialogue. Yeah. Um, but that it also everybody knows that what happens is out there in the real world yeah. and everyone can be a part of it. Yeah. And I think our courses as well are designed so that they give students opportunity to work in groups interdisciplinary groups so that they get to experience those challenges that you would have in the real world so we help to develop those employability skills don't we absolutely and i think something that anyone in the creative industries would say is that you can't just be in one bit of creativity one subject or one area you know if you think about all the different things that make a film for example mm. then you know from writing to design to sets to costume like it's such yeah. a you know the world is so much about the meeting of all of these exciting things together that yeah. you have to have a bit of an idea how other things work and you have to be open to this idea that you can connect up collaborate to make something bigger if you like um, so yeah, I think it's that's something that I'm really interested in as well and how we can build that and how we can create projects that really bring things together. And I think also we have students who've then gone on, finished their course and set up their business and maybe use some of the things like we have Launchpad and we have all these opportunities to support students in then moving forward. So mm. do you know much about how that works? Yeah, this is true. There's been a lot of examples of this. Um, and also it's something that we try to embed through as a journey. Yes. So, you know, particularly um, different moments throughout whichever course you're on, there will be those moments where we look at kind of, you know, how to establish your professional practice and your communications and, your, yeah. you know, people, I, you know, I see people's eyes roll when I say CV, but I can't tell you how important it is. I still have to regularly produce a CV for many different reasons. And a lot of, you know, my peers in the world will be like, literally, Sarah, can you help me write my CV and yeah. make it look good? So that's something that's built in throughout. And then also it works into these uh, things like Launchpad that we have, where it may be that you can even get, um, you know, support investment back in to set up your mm. um, organization, your uh, company, however it is you want to do, you know, some of these industries are quite freelance and maybe you just yeah. need support to set up on your own or you want to, you know, cut straight to the chase. I want to set up a production company. I want to yeah. set up a design studio. I want to set up an art in the community project. Yeah. There's all of these different things that you could be doing. So the other thing that I was thinking about, which is kind of the other end of the student's journey, is when they get to completing their degree and before they move on to do whatever they do, there is an opportunity to share all the brilliant stuff that they've done while they've been with us. And we call that Graduate Showcase, don't we? So do you want to talk a little bit about the Graduate Showcase Week? Graduate Showcase Week is one of my favourite times of the year. It's really exciting because it's a chance to display all of the work that our undergraduate courses have made to the public, to industry, for everybody to come. So it's an art exhibition, it's a fashion show, it's a music. Um, concert it's a film screening it's all of these little bits of our courses all come together in this magical week so it's definitely worth coming along and also a moment when you can talk to us and also talk to some of the existing students and graduates that are around yeah we have alumni come and visit we have schools and colleges come to visit we have people from the local business community it's just like a nice event for the creative community, an opportunity for our students to be proud of what they've achieved while they've been with us, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I think that's a, a showcase, a celebration, yeah. um, and also, yeah, just a moment to engage and where everyone can get together. And, and actually, I do remember you introduced the fashion show usually, and I'm pretty sure there's a nice YouTube clip of that with the fashion show, so that's a good little watch if somebody's really into their fashion. Yay, absolutely. It's brilliant. Thank you so much, Sarah. That's been really good fun. Thank you. So... There are lots of ways in which you can get hold of us and come and talk to us about what courses we have available. You can come along to an open day. You can go online, have a look at the courses. We've got chats on there. You can just pick up the phone and speak to us. And we're really looking forward to hearing from you.